Today we're going to look at honoring the Lord's name, which is found in the third commandment, Exodus 20, verse 7. First off, we've just finished looking at the first two commandments that God gave to the, his people on Mount Sinai. Now we're going to look at the third one, which forbids our taking the Lord's name in vain. So here it is. Exodus 20, verse 7 says, You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not leave him unpunished who takes his name in vain. So let's think about this for just a few minutes. You know, we usually take this to mean outlawing crude or coarse language, especially when used alongside the name of God, like, oh my, and you can, you know where I'm going with that, or, or Jesus Christ, but not in the name of hail Jesus. Jesus, you are great, but in an exclamation. Um, this, of course, is a correct way to interpret that. But that's not everything that this commandment means. Let's first talk about the significance of a person's name. You know, especially in the ancient world, but even today, a person's main name encapsulates or, or describes a person's character and the kind of person they are. You know, some of you who know me, when you hear my name, you instantly think of things. Hopefully good things, but you think of things that have to do with me. And likewise, when I think of some of you, I instantly think of things. There are sports stars, politicians, people, movie characters, characters in movies that you hear their name and you instantly think of things. You know, if I heard the name El Guapo, I'm instantly thinking of the three amigos and the infamous villain. But when you... You know, and, and, and it's not like you just dwell on that forever, but, you know, maybe even for a moment. Ecclesiastes 7.1 says, A good name is better than a good ointment, and the day of one's death is better than the day of one's birth. Now that last part, that might be a little uh, disconcerting or confusing to those of you who don't think about it, but we're not going to talk about the end of that verse right now. But a good name is better than a good ointment. Some places in Proverbs says a good name is rather to be chosen than great riches. Of course, that has nothing to do with your name as Michael, Bob, Jeff, Jonathan, David. It has to do with who you are as a person and what that means. You know, th this, is, this is very clear when it comes to the names of God. And if you want to go back in the fall and even in the summer, I talked about the names of God, what they mean, and what they show us about God's character. Because every single name tells us something true about who he is. For instance, the covenant name of God, Yahweh, or I Am, reveals his eternality and his self-existence. See, God is forever. He is uncreated. And he doesn't need us for anything. And the third commandment points to his very nature. It has more to, in view than just coarse language that uses the name of God, as hopefully you can see. But yes, the third commandment has special reference to our actual use of his name in spoken word or in writing. But it more broadly forbids anything that presents our Lord and his character in an incorrect or frivolous manner. There are many ways that our words and deeds can say wrong or trite things about God, and those are forbidden. Ezekiel 20, 27 through 28, the first part says, Therefore, son of man, speak to the house of Israel and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Yet in this your fathers have blasphemed me by acting treacherously against me. When I had brought them into the land which I swore to give them, then they saw every high hill and every leafy tree, and they offered there their sacrifices, and there they presented the provocation of their offering. See, every sin ultimately takes God's name in vain. You and I are created in the image of God. We are his image bearers, his name bearers. So when we sin, that goes against his nature, 
and it is taking his name in vain. See, breaking the first commandment is to attribute the highest glory to something that does not deserve it. That is a vain use of God's name. Giving glory to something that does not deserve it. A block of stone, a piece of paper, another person. It's just not the way it should be. See, every commandment is intertwined with others. You just heard me refer to the first commandment. Let me give you a few other examples. See, adultery is the theft of someone else's spouse. You're not to commit adultery. You're also not to steal. They're intertwined. But then stealing is also the fruit of coveting. You, you don't steal things that you have no desire for. You see things and you want them and you need them and you think that you deserve them. So you steal them. That's coveting. It's also theft, which you are expressly told not to do. See, when we break any of God's laws, we are saying that his rules do not stand above all other laws. Thereby, we are exalting ourselves over the Lord. See, when we sin, we make ourselves the authority in his place. You know, one, one thing I often hear is that when it comes to forgiving yourself, and it has to do with this, people will say, you know, I know God has forgiven me. I know that so-and-so has forgiven me, but I just can't forgive myself. I'd like you to listen to yourself for a second. How pompous and how arrogant that saying is. I mean, I know where it comes from. But you're saying that your court is higher than God's court? I mean, think about it. God has forgiven you. What right do you have to not forgive yourself? Now, I know that's easier than said than done. And so often we are the hardest on ourselves. But God's ways are higher. And if he says something... That's the way that it, that it should be. So let's talk about what this means. You know, one of the ways we can avoid misusing the name of God is to be well-grounded in what the Bible teaches about his character. There are posters, there are studies, I've done them, about the names of God and what they mean. El Roy, the God who sees. There's nothing that goes on that he does not see. There's no injustice that will not ultimately be taken care of. Uh, Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals. Jehovah Jireh, the God who provides. El Gabor, my favorite, the champion who has never been touched. Mighty God. There's Jehovah Shalom, the God who makes all things complete. True Shalom. You know, by studying the attributes and characteristics of God, we come to a better understanding of the God of whom we speak and are less likely to misrepresent him. Because we are sinners, though, we will fall short and at times take the name of the Lord in vain. But have hope. Thankfully, God is gracious and forgives us when we turn to him and repent. And see, the fact is, if we've been taking God's name in vain, let us turn from this sin today toward Christ and seek to honor his name in all that we do. We're not going to be perfect. We're going to sin along the way. We're going to take the Lord's name in vain. We're going to place our court above his. We're going to place ourselves above him. But remember, the Lord is gracious. A broken and contrite spirit brought to the Lord in confession will bring about healing. If you have not turned your life toward Jesus today, I invite you to do so. It's a simple step. The Bible says if you believe in your heart, that if you confess with your mouth, that Jesus Christ is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, 
you will be saved. It's that simple. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. If this is something you desire, I invite you to reach out to me, or reach out to another Christian or pastor that you know. I would love to have a conversation with you. I would love to pray with you and lead you to life everlasting and a God who loves deeper than we could ever imagine. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for being Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Jireh, El Roi, El Shaddai, Jehovah Shalom, Yahweh. Your names are higher and greater than any. And may we be students of your word to know what these names mean and to better understand who you are and grow closer and deeper in love with you. God, you are great. There is no one greater than you. And today we, we ask that you forgive us for using your name in vain. We ask that you forgive us for every time we have placed our will above yours. Every time we have misrepresented your name, Lord, forgive us of these sins. And may you help us grow into greater representations of who you are, forging us more and more like you, Jesus. And it is that, that name, the name at which every knee will bow, every tongue will confess on heaven, in heaven, on the earth, under the earth that you are Lord. Jesus Christ, it is in your name I pray. Amen. May the grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Thank you.